Hello, I'm Fast Lawyer. Today we're gonna do a review for Dingleberries, a free-to-play game on the Steam Store, and I will put the link in the description for this video, so look for it down below. Dingleberries was released on the Steam Store December 7th by the company. It's available for the Valve Index, HTC Vive, and the Oculus Rift. Now, technically, Dingleberries is a demo. It's described by the developer as a demo, but there is at least an hour's worth of content here. So really, it has enough content here that they could actually charge a price for this game. And I know that an hour doesn't seem like a whole lot of content, especially for non-VR, but in VR, that's actually quite a bit of content, something that you can start charging for. I believe the reason Dingleberries is just a demo or described as just a demo is because the developer does plan to have a game with more features. This is just single player but the developer plans on adding multiplayer aspects to Dingleberry so this is just considered like an alpha build single player or you can just test some of the game mechanics but what's here is actually pretty fun to play and I highly recommend it. In essence Dingleberries is a parkour game so the locomotion is basically you have your feet on the ground and you propel yourself forward and there's just different platforming challenges that you need to complete. Now there's only four different levels, but there's different difficulties you can try for those four levels. And on top of that, there is a roguelike level after you complete that. And if you unlock that, there is a further level that I wasn't able to unlock because the roguelike level is actually pretty difficult. Uh, I did have a lot of fun playing this game and you actually get a good workout traversing the different courses in this game. Dingleberries is running on the Unity engine. On my RTX 3080, I was getting a steady 90 frames per second. I had no issues playing this on the Oculus Quest 2 using the Oculus Link cable, and I did not experience any bugs. This is a pretty polished experience, in fact. Especially for something that's being called an alpha build, this is pretty good. Like I said, you propel yourself forward by basically pushing off from the floor and just jumping around. You also have smooth turning. Unfortunately, it is a little bit slow. So I do recommend standing room so you could at least turn around within your play space. I think this will make the game easier as long as you're not tripping over your wires. And unfortunately, when you do turn in this game, there is an automatic vignette that I couldn't turn off. So beware of that. And there's not enough settings here as far as graphical and whatnot. I would like to see that, but again, this is an alpha build for the game, so I guess that's to be expected. Now, as I mentioned before, there are different difficulty levels in this game, and it took me a while to figure out exactly how they were different, but I think I finally figured it out. The difference between easy and the difficult levels, I just believe, is in the jumping itself. I think the jumping has like an automatic assist in the easier levels and when you get to the hardest one you just have no help. So even though the course is the same it's a lot more difficult just because you don't have that extra help when making the jump so you really have to gauge those jumps very carefully. Now there is some trial and error with this game. It'll take you a while to get used to pushing yourself off the ground, propelling yourself off the ground and gauging what force you need in order to make those jumps and it definitely gets a lot trickier with the later levels and you'll die lots of times. I died several times trying to beat this game. I did finish all the levels in the hardest difficulty but once I got to the rogue-like portion of the game it's very long and if you die too many times you have to restart from the very beginning so that's what makes it very difficult. I did have fun but it is very challenging so it's not for everyone as far as the rogue-like section of this game and it can be quite frustrating to have to start from the very beginning after having just surpassed a particularly difficult section of the rogue light level and obviously because this is a demo it doesn't have a whole lot of levels and the levels that are there are pretty short except for the rogue light section and then you have another level that you can unlock but i wasn't able to unlock it so it's free I highly recommend it. I had fun playing it. If I have to rate it, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. I think for a free-to-play title, there's actually quite a bit of content here, especially for VR. Most free-to-play titles in VR don't have at least an hour of content, and this one does. So I would say it's more than a demo, especially in VR, and I highly recommend that you download it. I'm excited about the main game whenever that comes out and the multiplayer sections that are mentioned by this developer. Basically you and your buddies can all get together up to four and basically just fight 
on this map, you know, while you're doing this platforming, which adds another layer to the gameplay. That sounds exciting to me, but I don't know how that'll turn out. I guess we'll find out in the future. Anyways, I'm Fast Lawyer. If you liked my video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, have a wonderful day. Goodbye.